right. Hello, mainlets. Today I thought it would be fun before I go to my Korean blockchain week uh, speaker session, which is in like an hour and a half or something, uh, to just build a more full-fledged uh, Solana app. And I think it's useful to do this now because there's a Solana Radar Hackathon, which is basically a Solana startup competition. And I know a lot of you have good ideas, but just don't have, let's say, the technical chops to build something um, that's functional. So I'm going to basically assume the part of one of these folks. I'm not going to code, uh, or I'm going to try to code not at all and just go with what the AI says, but sometimes I might jump in there. And, um, oh, actually, my beard looks horrible. People were calling me a terrorist yesterday because of, of the beard. And I think what we'll do is we'll build a full-fleshed uh, Solana staking app. So basically, obviously, it's a proof-of-stake network, and there's a lot of validators on the network. And so we're just going to surface them, uh, maybe show some stats about them, and then let a user connect their wallet and stake with one of these folks. Okay, so let's get to it. Oh, and today I'm not going to use, in the past two videos, I've used the command L interface here, which is a chat interface. But there's actually another feature of cursor that's called composer, which actually updates all the files for you. It's a bit slower. It's in beta. But we're just going to try that out. And I'm not going to edit any of this except for, you know, what Loom does. And so just to show you the entire process. Okay, so you'll see here that I already have a React app set up. Just a regular create React app command from the docs. And obviously I have cursor here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press Command I. And what you'll see here is it brings up this little chat window, which is the composer. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add some files. Okay, so we're going to all these files and probably the package JSON. Yep. And Let's see if I need anything from the public. Let's add this as well. And so I'm gonna give it the context that it needs. I think there's probably a better way to do this, but I actually don't know how to do it. So, you know, fuck it. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tell it what we want. So, hello, sir. I want to update my existing React app to be a Solana staking UI. I want to surface a paginated list of all Solana validators that a user can stake with in grid view. Also surface some stats about the validators like commission. I then want a user to be able to connect their Solana wallet and stake with a chosen validator. Make the UI modern and sleek and sexy. All right, let's go give me all the code for this. All right, so as you can see, it says Composer here, this is a new feature. And let's see what it does. I actually haven't used Composer much, so basically just doing this live. Okay. So it is actually, let's put this to the right. Okay, so what, what's cool about this is it's actually updating the files on its own here. If you watched the previous two videos, that was a manual process where we had to literally click apply and continue and accept and save. But it's actually doing all of this on its own, which is pretty crazy. So let's kind of just look through what it did here. It updated the app.js file. It also literally created a components folder here with uh, validator uh, components. And it also even added the new styling. So that's pretty crazy. So we're gonna accept all of this. Okay, and then let's open up terminal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press npm install or npm i, which is a shortcut. And then we're gonna wait for it to install. All right, so it is finished installing. Um, and then right here, I see that it says, remember to handle errors and add loading states. And it's like, bro, just do that for me. Okay. Okay. 
can you add the error handling and loading states for me please this app should be fully functional and user ready is that even a word user ready okay so let's 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 command our little overlord which is going to take over the world pretty soon and so it's processing okay so it is applying the files now and we can just click accept all here instead of going to every single file and all right so that should be the first starting point here now it's almost certainly not going to work but let's just try it so we click npm start or enter npm start to start the app and we see a little gerbil hamster i don't know what that is and let's see what happens okay so already we have a shit ton of errors fantastic so we are going to tell this to claude i ran npm start and got the following errors please ensure they are fixed copy paste submit all right now let's wait this polyfill error is a super annoying one. We don't maintain our SD case here. And so let's wait for it to process. All right, so now we have some fixes for why it thinks it's broken. Let's, actually one thing I'm noticing here is that it's using the devnet URL, which we don't want, but let's accept this first. And let's go ahead and install these Browserify packages. All right, so let's do that. And it seems it already added a Webpack config file. And then now what I wanna do, actually, oh, it's working kind of. Let's go to Helios and let's go to our endpoints here and get the main RPC URL. Replace the default RPC URL with this Helios one. Because the Solana DevNet public endpoints are gonna be severely rate limited and, and slower and you definitely cannot use them for production. So let's do this. Now in practice, you'd actually wanna make sure the key is somewhat shielded or at least you use a proxy or something, but for this video, it's fine. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's clear this and let's give it one more shot. Let's wait for it to load. And all right, so we have more problems. Problems, problems, problems. Okay, so let's go to where, where the fuck are we going here? Let's just copy the browser errors. Okay. I ran npm start and I'm getting these errors. Please make sure they are fixed. Let's submit that. Okay, so now it realized that we're using React app and that we'll want to do this. So let's stop the server. Let's install React app rewired. And let's see it new scripts so let's see if they're actually there it actually doesn't seem like they're there so that's weird okay well so it, it did crap out here so you need to be able to kind of figure that out on your own you can kind of just see that it didn't actually apply it so now let's do this so the index file has changed we don't actually need the webpack config anymore apparently we have config overrides here okay all right so that seems like it should be fine let's run this again and see what we get this time okay so now we have something and it seems to be loading validators now i'm not sure so you can actually if you know you just right click inspect see the console here and see if there's any issues it's unclear why the validators aren't loading so let's tell it that so now it compiles but it's stuck on loading validators on the ui please fix this so the validators are properly 
fetched and rendered. All right, so let's see what it has to say about this. Or maybe is it really slow? Nope. All right, so it told us a bunch of things that it thinks are the problem. So how are the values even being fetched here? Let's go ahead and accept all. So it's using get program accounts here, but that actually seems pretty stupid to me because you can just use get vote accounts. So it's maybe training data is a little outdated, but whatever, let's just try it out. NPM start. All right, so we have <laughs> just a page here and it's still not doing the fetching properly. Okay, I noticed you are using get program accounts for validators, but you should be using get vote accounts instead. Please update all the necessary code. All right, let's do this. You're absolutely right. Yes, I am right. Fuck, man. So probably Claude will not be taking over the world anytime soon. And so let's wait for the... Okay, so accept all. So now it seems to be actually making a call to get vote accounts. Let's do NPM start now. Okay, so now it seems to... I mean, the UI is awful, but at least we're seeing validators. All validators on Solana, or at least... Yeah, I mean, it should be all validators. Uh, their commission, which is you know how much money they take from the rewards that they get, such as inflation or MEV, or actually this is just inflation, public keys, and the amount of stake that they have. Okay, so before we go any further here, so now the validators are rendering, but the UI absolutely sucks. Please ensure the validators are individually rendered in beautiful modern cards with proper padding and spacing and ensure the rest of the UI has a nice clean cyberpunk theme that even who's a who's a designer these days that even Leonardo da Vinci would be proud of generate all the necessary or let's say update all the necessary code update all the necessary code for this so there's actually another system by Vercel called v0 that's actually probably better for uis but we don't want to kind of get complicated with the tooling here just want to use i mean they both basically use ai under under the hood anyways so i don't really see a reason for needing to upgrade it you just need to prompt it a few few times basically just hit it in the head so okay let's Let's see what we're doing here. It's upgrading the CSS files and the JS files. So we're gonna accept all. I always like restarting the server to ensure there's no stale caches or anything. And all right, so this looks slightly better. Does it go to, okay, so it's also paginated. So we actually get a list of all Solana validators basically. And it's super fast because using Helios RPCs. <clears throat> and so let's let's kind of say, so the UI looks a bit better, but it's still not clean and beautiful enough. You are missing margins and padding, margins and spacing in the grid layout. Ensure it's cleaner and update the color palette to be more modern like a Vercel style. Let's let's just say something like that. So note that I'm just basically saying a bunch of random shit that comes into my head here. There's no real science to this, unless you obviously have a great idea to begin with that you can describe it. You can also do things like uh, actually draw out the UI that you want and upload the image, and then it'll actually try to, or it'll get pretty close to rendering that. I think Vercel also does that as well, but we're just gonna keep it simple and just do English. Okay, so. Let's accept all here. It's saying to update my index.html file because apparently it's challenged. Um, let's add this. Okay. And clear. NPM start. Okay, so it's still not actually, I think I actually made it worse in some regards. <laughs> 
but let's let's try to give it a bit more specific command. So the validator grid is overflowing vertically. Ensure there is vertical spacing in each row of the grid so that each card is distinctly so let's do this this should be easier to do i think all right so it's going to update and and this is actually one of the things maybe one of the pro tips for using ai is you actually want to give it pretty granular and small instructions and kind of just do it sequentially because if you kind of give it everything at once it'll basically just fuck up. I think that'll probably be fixed with kind of longer context windows in the future, but currently this is the case. Okay, so it still did not fix that for some reason. Okay, this is getting, this is getting interesting. Now, why is it not doing it? Let's, maybe if we just open this file here, margin bottom. Okay. The validator grid, each validator entry, oh, let's open composer here is still overflowing vertically. Try a new grid approach. Let's just tell it this instead. And all right, it thinks it understands the issue, which it probably doesn't, but I'm used to being gaslit by robots. Now, if you know literally anything about front end, this is actually a pretty easy problem to fix. And so we could just go in there and, and, and write the code for this ourselves quickly. Uh, but I want to make sure that people who don't generally code or maybe just don't do front end and only do back end can still understand how to kind of work through this process without knowing it. Okay, so let's do this. Clear npm start. Okay, it did not do anything. All right, let's. I'm not sure what the issue here is. So let's say, okay, you did not change anything in the past three attempts please rework how the grid system is designed ensure each validator is in a single card with its own margins and padding that doesn't overlap with the next validator beside it or below it or above it okay so Hopefully, saying that it did not change anything in the past three attempts kind of gets it to go and think outside of its existing solution space here. Okay, so it seems like it's making quite a few changes. And it's also removing some unused code. Okay, so let's accept all here. And let's ensure everything is saved. Okay, it seems to be saved. Okay, so it still didn't work. Oh, no, okay, it finally worked. There we go. Okay, so now each validator, you can actually see a bit better. Okay, I also wanna make sure, ensure that the pagination component shows you how many pages there are instead of just a basic previous next interface. So let's also add that. And then next, we'll probably want to add the staking button. All right, so, and then I think the UI is still pretty ugly, but I think for the purpose of this, it's fine because I think the tougher part here is gonna be actually getting it to connect the wallet properly and send a staking transaction. I have no faith it'll be able to do that, but we're doing this live, so let's see if we can figure it out. All right, so let's do this. Let's npm start and let's load this. All right, so now it shows us that there's 173 pages here. Now we would want to get fancy in reality and you know make this configurable and let you uh, jump between the different pages and whatnot, but we're not going to do that for this. Let's see actually if we can even collect, connect the wallet. All right, let's go with, I don't know, let's go with Soulflare. And okay, let's connect. All right, so it does connect the wallet. Now let's ensure let me actually disconnect this okay now i want a user to be able to click a validator and stake with them ensure the solana transaction for staking with a validator is properly formatted and presents 
feedback to the user, ensure it has error handling and loading. All right. So let's see what we get here. All right. So it is applying a bunch of changes here. It's creating a new modal component. Um, and it doesn't seem to have installed anything new. And so we can just accept this as it is. There is an error. So let's make sure these errors are handled. Getting these errors. So it doesn't clean up the code automatically every time because again, I don't think it can do too many things at once. But this should be a pretty fairly easy fix. And so let's wait for it to kind of get to work here. Okay, so it gave me a bunch of changes. I actually think the changes are probably stupid and won't work, but again, I'm just gonna assume I don't know how this works first. And so let's clear this, npm start. All right, let's see if anything breaks. All right, so it says connect your wallet to stake. So let's connect the wallet, so connect. And we wanna click here and stake with this wallet maybe. I actually don't know how much soul I have. So let's just say something like 0 0.1 soul stake. All right, so access forbidden. Failed to get recent block hash. I'm not sure <laughs> why it thought it could do that. Okay, so it's actually still using the API Okay, so there's, a, there's actually a few issues here. Um, first is that it's actually using the Solana default. Um, or where would this be actually? So it's still using somewhere in the code a default public endpoint for RPCs instead of, let's go back to Keelius here, copy this, instead of Make sure it's all code is updated. Um, so let's see where that's coming from. My guess is probably somewhere here. Uh, or actually probably not here. It is in the stake modal. Yep, it's right here. So it's basically going to go and update this with the current RPC URL. And then the other problem, of course, is that uh, it is not getting the recent block hash. So we'll tell that after. All right, so let's accept these. Let's actually first make sure it didn't break anything in the meanwhile. So, okay, this seems to be fine. All right, so now this isn't gonna work because we didn't fix the problem from last time. So now I'm getting, again, ensure Solana transaction sending logic is correct. You already know the docs. All right, let's give a little pep talk here. You already know what you're doing, baby. All right, so let's wait for this to Uh, that is incorrect, what it's telling me. Um, oh, actually, I messed up here. I shouldn't have gave it that error. Or Okay, so let's actually go here. Let's try to... Actually, let's look at the commission here. Okay, zero, 0 0.1. Stake. Okay. Staking account transfer. I trust this transaction. Uh, approve. All right, so now we're getting this error. Okay, so now I'm able to generate the transaction, but I'm getting this error. Ensure only the current public key, the current connected wallet can sign this transaction and has the right authorization figure out the following error. All right, so this is kind of where it gets a little interesting because you generally don't want to work with um, 
let's say, writing data to the blockchain with pure AI, because if you expose the wrong functionality, you can lose your funds, you can make your users lose funds. And so you need to get pretty careful here. And ideally, you know somewhat what you're doing. Um, but for the purpose of prototyping something that won't be in production, um, which you can kind of get somebody to take a look like an audit firm or something afterwards, I think it's still useful to prototype things. All right, so let's accept all of these. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and see what we get here. NPM start. Let's connect our Soulflare wallet. Let's pick a validator. Let's do 0 0.1 soul and press stake. Continue, trust, approve. And so now, okay, so it says it's staked successfully. Um, but I don't trust this. So let's actually go ahead and um, go to an explorer, okay, with this wallet and see if it actually did anything. Okay, so a few seconds ago. It seems to have done something here, but I'm not quite sure what this is doing. So maybe let's try soul scan, which needs to verify that I'm human. I'm not sure if I'm human. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this transaction. All right, so I think this did stake. Uh, staker, withdrawer, custodian. And all right, there we go. So we were able to stake on this validator, whatever validator it is, um, using nothing but cursor and Claude, basically. So that works. Now, there's a lot of still wonky things about this. Like, can I even unstake? You'd want to add an unstake functionality, um, which you would do using the same kind of format. You would also want to get the um, actual validator metadata, right? So you want to show like, okay, who is this person actually? Um, and show more relevant information. Um, and just to do like a sanity check here, let's... So I'm pretty anal about security. Is this code secure enough such that I won't lose funds. Analyze it. All right, so let's see what it thinks of that. Okay, so it's giving us a bunch of interesting considerations here. Um, it first analyzes the code for how secure it is, and then says, like, here are some things you can um, consider. So for example, stimulating the transaction, um, securing, uh, adding input validation, etc. So Let's add transaction simulation. Let's also add an explorer link to SoulScan for when a transaction is successful so the user can view it on the chain. All right, so let's do this. All right, so it's adding the code for this. It's adding some input validation um, and a blockchain uh, or block explorer uh, uh, link and a simulate transaction as well. So the wallet isn't as scary. So let's accept all of these and let's see if that still works. So we'll go to restart the server. We'll connect our wallet. Let's go to 0% uh, commission. Let's do 0 0.1 here. And let's press stake. Okay. All right, so it's telling us what it's doing here. So let's click approve. We're seeking with the Nexus validator. And so this is like one of the, these things where we can, actually, you know what? I will be staking with Helios, um, which I actually can't find. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now, add a search function so I can 
pull up a validator by typing their key. So let's just add that. So this is something that's actually would be pretty annoying to do on your own, I think. Like you need to add all these libraries and stuff. And it's basically just grunt work because like everybody knows how to do it. And so this is something where AI can really just save you some time. And so let's wait for it to, and then we'll, we can also add um, commission information as well so that you can kind of sort by highest commission, lowest commission. All right, so it uh, updated all the code for this. So we're gonna accept this as it is. Uh, I'm surprised it actually didn't need to install any new libraries. That is interesting. Um, I think that's probably because it's already being rendered on the UI. And so, all right, so let's kind of do this. Let's connect the wallet first. And let's do HE1. All right, so here is Helios. We can see the public key is grinded here. And so we'll do 0 0.1. And we'll press Sake, continue, and right here you can see Helios. And I'm gonna give myself $13 here. So approve, staking, view transaction on Solana. And here we go. It actually tags Helios here anyways, and we were able to stake. All right, so I think that's pretty much all you need. Now, of course, you'll want to add unsafe functionality as well. I'm not going to do it because you should never unsafe from Helios. Um, but we can also do something like, okay, now make it such that the user can uh, sort by highest or just by commission. All right, so let's just add that little last functionality because we have the commission here. Um, and also we'll actually do it such that it can um, sort by stake amount as well if you want to stake with people who are, uh, let's say, uh, non the super minority. Okay, so it actually did not do anything here. And by stake amount. All right, so let's generate this. All right, so generated all the sorting functionality for us here. Again, I don't have to do anything but click accept all. And so now we're gonna do that. We're gonna restart this again because I'm anal. NPM start. All right, we're gonna go here, connect, and let's do it by high to low, and yeah. You can see because Helios is the number one state validator on Solana with the highest stake, it is doing this correctly. And you can also do it by commission low to high to get all the zero commission validators. Or there's some with 100% commission, which is an interesting concept. Uh, but all right, so, and this goes back to the default. So I think that's pretty much, okay, actually one thing that I'll kind of Hail Mary YOLO here is that I actually still hate the UI. So you can probably stop watching the video here, but I'm gonna to try to actually make the UI less disgusting. Okay, so now everything is functional. Please ensure you don't change any logic or um, yeah, just any logic. But the UI is still ugly. I want you to redesign just the visuals such that it looks like a cool, dark, Vercel, Vercel, mm, cool, dark, modern, sleek, sexy UI that looks like Vercel, such that Steve Jobs would be proud add some cool animations too but ensure the existing code doesn't break all right so i'm gonna just kind of take this hail mary shot here again uh it's probably better to use Vercel v0 for uis because it's literally meant for that um, but i think you can get a pretty long way with claude all right so it added a bunch of stuff let's accept these now it is saying something 
kind of silly here. Um, make sure all components reflect the changes, such as adding class names. It's, it's basically saying that it basically didn't touch the JavaScript at all, which might be fine depending on how it did the styling, but let's, um, let's ensure that it knows. Oh, actually, I think it already looks good enough here. I mean, it's certainly not great, but it's, I think it's, it's better than it was. But let's see if it does anything while updating the app.js. All right, so it is done. Let's press accept all. Let's actually restart this as well in case it did something funky with the style sheet loading. npm start. Let's get here. All right, I think it made it uglier. So, well, I think it improved some things, but then it definitely did not improve this thing. Um, okay, so it is now 40 minutes into the video and we have a basically a full flash um, app Solana app where you can filter by validators um, and sort and stake with them directly using the Solana wallet uh, adapter and also just regular Solana RPC transactions. There's a lot of improvements you can make to this, uh, but I do need to go across Korea and give a talk about Salami. And so I probably shouldn't be late for that. Um, but this is a pretty good starting point. Uh, if you're doing a hackathon, you can basically just start prototyping stuff like this. This took, you know, roughly 40 minutes. Um, and uh, that's a really good starting point. Uh, get it in the hands of users, get some feedback, see if they would, you know, actually use something like this. And then if you have conviction, you can then start forming a team, hire a technical co-founder, uh, etc. And obviously, if you're ever going to touch the blockchain in terms of um, writing data or uh, handling user funds in any way, you should get an audit, multiple audits. Um, AutoSec is pretty good. Um, uh, Neodyme is pretty good. So you can, there's a lot of tooling, uh, but now with this extra one, you should be able to ship some pretty cool shit on Solana fast. All right. Thank you.